<laughs> this is actually my first stand-up comedy. Thank you very much. Uh, many times of being a germaphobe, I'm not. And, uh, I just have a very acute awareness of organisms that are much smaller than myself. I remember on the time that my wife and I went on our second uh, date, she wanted to go to a bowling alley, which would never be my choice. Bowling alley to me is like diving head first into a porta potty after a Super Bowl game, but I did it because our first date went so well. And I thought, well, if our second date went this well, you know, I might get some action. So on the door to bowling out, we, we go up to the counter, and um, that's when I found out that my shoes weren't good enough for their fancy bowling alley, so I had to rent some 10-year-old disgusting footwear. <laughs> so he puts them on the counter, probably right after they came out of the bathroom after standing in some pool of piss under a urinal. <laughs> it was some big old ass guy that had pus on the bottom of his feet, and pus holes, and he, I had to rent these things, so I bought them, and I picked them up, and off we walked to the lane. So we start bowling, and I'm, I'm trying to ignore everything going on around me because, like, let's face it, the people that bowl are the dregs of society. You know who you are, don't make like it's not, but it is. And the guy, like, over there, you know, I mean, he's like the quintessential. He's not even wearing a shirt. He's wearing one of these, you know, it's, a, it's an undershirt without sleeves. I don't think you call it a tank top or wife beater or something. He's got, you know, very few teeth. He smells and... Anyways, he's got more chins than a Chinese phone book, and he comes over. <laughs> My Chinese friend, right here, about this one. Sorry, Vicky. So he comes over to get a bowling ball and a little carousel, and since he's pretty high, high-end trailer trash, he picks up not just any black bowling ball. He picks up the one with the the gold sparkly things on it because he's so high class. So off he goes. So we start bowling, we do our thing, and I'm really got uh, my, my, my shades on so I don't see what's going on. And we're having a good time. We, I mean, we really are. We get to the end of the game or the string, or whatever the hell you call that thing, and it's my turn. It's at the end of the string, and I go to get a ball, and there's no ball there, so I'm waiting and waiting, and out, out it comes out of the thing. It comes right up to me, and it's that big black ball with the golden sparkles on it. And I know that, that wife beater, like right before he started bowling, he was in the bathroom, he saw that sign that said, employees must wash their hands, and he's thinking, what the hell, I don't work here. Because in his mind, in his mind, a tiny little ripped piece of toilet paper is plenty of barrier between his inner colon and the rest of us. And now I get this call, so obviously I decide I'm not going to do this. And I was about to turn around, and all of a sudden I hear her saying, come on, David, six more balls and we're going to be tied. I mean, she's all excited. And I'm looking at those three black anuses, and all I'm thinking about is all I'm thinking about is the top eight layers are just this guy's filth and you know body fluids and everything. But you know my my brain and my penis are in this this huge war, and you know who wins that. So my daughter's closing her eyes. So basically, I just shut my eyes. I, I held the puke in, and I put. You're not even allowed to pick these things up with your pinkies. You got to put your three best fingers in them. And I just and then I went back over to Laurie and I was like, we had a good time, let's get out of here now. She goes, okay, fine, but I'm hungry. I'm hungry, we're not eating here, this is a bowling alley. I mean, the only food you can get is that, that big piece of bread with some cheese on it, they call it a pizza or some fried chicken, something. Either way, it's finger food. I mean, in my mind, everything's crashing down. You, you got wife beer in the bathroom, with his hand up his crack, in the ball hose, my finger's going after it. Next thing I'm supposed to put my fan in some food and eat it and swallow it. I can't do it anymore. I said, look, it, an hour ago, I just wanted to be friends with benefits. Now all I'm thinking about is to hurl my body into some big vat of acid like the Joker and just disinfect myself, but I can't do it anymore. I'm sorry, but you know what? I mean, gay people, they'll be the first to tell you. They've always known they were gay. I mean, um, you know, Harry Rayfield just told me this before in privacy. But <laughs> I knew at a very young age that I had this, this really problem with acute awareness of bacteria. I remember you know, your, your earliest memories. I remember going to my, a, four, a fourth grade, you know, four-year-old birthday party at Robert Weiss's house. And, and we get to the house and, um, you know, you do all the birthday party things, the pin the tail, all this other stuff. And then the grand finale, right? The big cake comes out. It's all blazing in glory. And it's all got candles and everything. And they put it on the table. We all sing a song. And then Robert Weiss gets up on the table. And he's like, <laughs> 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 
And then his mother cuts it up and she almost dares you with it. Here, eat it, eat it, honey, have a piece. <laughs> no, please don't make me eat it. I, I'd rather have two hoodsies. At least, you know, you've got the wooden spoon inside a wrapper and you can throw it away and it's fine. I don't want the cake. But you have to eat the cake. I mean, who thought this one up? This is a tradition. It's been going on for hundreds of years. What great philosophers were sitting around some table one day and the head philosopher, I mean, he's in charge and he's saying, to celebrate the upcoming anniversary of my birth, I'm going to have the grandest dessert made in all the land. And it's going to be put on the table in front of me with my name scribed on it. And there's going to be many torches, one for each year of my life on the cake. And in an effort to extinguish these torches, I'm going to get up on the table and extinguish it with the contents of my lungs, including the mucus and the air and the spit. And since we haven't yet invented toothbrushes or floss, I will throw them, all the rotten meat that's been sitting in my teeth for weeks all over the cake, and everyone in the town will eat it to celebrate my life. I would sit at that table, I'd say, look, Socrates, what say we wait till it's my birthday, forget the cake, we'll put a big bowl of birthday chili on there, I'll get up and I'll defecate in it, and you great thinkers can either eat it or forget this tradition, start something else, because I'm not doing that. <laughs> Not all birthdays are disgusting. When I was uh, like about 10 years old, my desk faced uh, Amy Calder's desk, so I used to look at her a lot. She was really cute. And somehow or another, I got invited to her birthday party. Now, at her birthday party, her mother thought it was real funny to put those trick candles on, so she's spitting all over the cake. And somehow, when her mother cut it up and she came to me, here, honey, have a piece, I wanted it. Like, I wanted to eat it, and I, and I didn't even want the hoodies. Give me more cake. I started eating it like crazy. I had a little moment there. It was like a fourth grade version of Viagra, so they're not all disgusting, but most of them are disgusting, right? So everybody does this. It's not just the little kids. It's everybody that you know every single year for their entire lives. Even old people do this disgusting routine, and we have to still eat it or else we're somehow insulting them. I mean, old people, the grossest people we have on the planet, they're doing it. And we have to eat their cake. But you know what? I promised myself I'm not going to rank on old people because I'm going to be old pretty soon. What I should be doing is ranking on ethnic groups and minorities because I know that someday I'm not going to wake up in the morning and look down and say, Ooh, we shall say you look so fine! But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that I will wake up someday and I'm going to be old, not so long in the future. And I'm going to have nothing on except like a Johnny and, and I'm going to sit in a doctor's office and, and he's going to walk in and he's going to talk to me like a four-year-old and he's going to say something like, you know, Oh, hey, David, it's good to see you again. I see you turned 97 the other day. Um, did you have a nice birthday party? <laughs> and I'll say, yeah, Doc. In fact, I brought you a container of some chili. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> well, look, at, uh, David, we're going to need the usual. We're going to need uh, a urine sample, some blood. A stool sample and uh, you know maybe a little semen if you can handle it. <laughs> and I'm gonna know, Doc. Look, at everything you want is right here in my underwear. Have a good night. <laughs> this is no, this. <laughs> have a great night. Thank. This is uh, that's it. So uh, this is, we have no waitresses, so don't worry about tipping them. I just wanted to try this out and see if it works. But thanks for coming.